Hello and welcome all. In this part, we shall create a data access service class that implements the iMovie DB service interface that we made in the last lecture. Add dependency injection to the public constructor of the class and create methods to retrieve all the movies as a list and as a specific movie by ID. So now I have flipped over to the Visual Studio again and let's create a class public class and name this class movie db service which implements the iMovie db service interface so movie db service colon and it implements i movie db service all right and now here this um, squiggly line this actually is asking us that you know it is it is suggesting that it does not implement these interface members all right so let the let us see the potential fixes so you know, implement interface okay so you can see that you know how it is going to implement this interface by creating the stub members stubs of these uh, methods okay so let's go for it so now this iMovie DB service squiggly line is gone now I have to keep on implementing one method after the other so at the moment it's happy just to throw a new not implemented exception which is just the stub it creates on its own and then cut it from here and the proper place of those two methods that I want to public is these ones is here on the top get movies and get movie by ID just reshuffle shuffling it a little bit okay so before I start completing these two methods I have to declare a private field private read only field and this is of type application db context application db context now for this I'll have to bring in a namespace using blazor movie app dot data okay because the data folder contains this application db context and uh, an object of that type i can name this underscore context okay so by convention we are marking this as underscore underscore context so this is actually it will be used for dependency injection in the public constructor so let's create the public constructor ctor and then inject this of this type application db context underscore context now i'll talk about dependency injection in a bit so this underscore now this passed in uh, object will be assigned the value of this for this read only property so underscore context equals the passed on object to the argument of this public constructor all right okay now the squiggly lines are gone so this dependency injection you see so this object is actually injected to, into the public constructor now this context object this will allow you to do carry out so many things actually now you it simulates uh, many methods from all the relevant classes and the classes inheriting from the application db context so if uh, what i am trying to say if we right click on the application db context and if we go to the definition 
Now this derives from the identity DB context. So let's see the definition for that. So identity DB context in its term, it also implements identity DB context on identity user, identity role and strings. So let's go to the uh, definition of this identity DB context and you will find that it's implementing an identity DB context of T user, T role, TK, identity user, claim, T key and many others. So if you get back to the definition of uh, the parent, go to definition, this is implementing identity user context. This is another uh, form of identity user context. And if you now go to the definition, finally, it is you can see that it is deriving from DB context. So this is at the parent, at the top level of the hierarchy from which this application DB context is derived. So if you go to the definition, you will find the so many things happening. <clears throat> there are so many members, you know. So one of the important members are DB query, which is actually can be used to query instances of T query. Link queries against DB query will be translated into queries against the database. And also you have got them update, okay? And you have got save changes async and save changes <coughs> async with the two different overloads and DB set, it is operating on DB set. It can be used to query and save instances of T entity, okay? So this is an important class which is at the top of the hierarchy and so when this is injected, the object of that application DB context is injected, then you can use this context object, underscore context object, to do different things, which will come in a bit. Um, now, back to this get movies. So as I told you that I will be completing these two methods today. Uh, so what we'll do is that it should return a task list of movies. Now, the first thing I need to do here is to make all these uh, methods async. So I'll be doing async methods, you know. So let me make this also as async. We'll be using async methods, you know, async programming. So we'll be concentrating these two on these two methods but the others have to stay there otherwise it will come it will not compile because these are must all of these implementations have to be there whether it is through the stub or through the actual methods so um, now the first thing that i have to do is to get rid of this throw new not implemented exception and then the code is return and then await use the context object underscore context dot movies dot to list async all right so what it how it is working now this is returning a task list of movies asynchronously asynchronously means you know it's a sort of um, parallel programming it's all the steps are not executed necessarily in series but they can happen at the same time now I have put some resources on the async programming please go through them that will be helpful in building the concepts now get movies it is uh, giving us it is returning on await so what this await does is that you know uh, it is returning the line of control program execution to the calling methods next line the line at which this get movies is called it falls to the next line and if there is some other operation it does that before coming back to the result of this context.movies.list async and then does uh, anything after this line, you know, after this return line. So in this case, it is obviously returning the control to the calling method. And if there is something, it, it is doing that. And then 
it, when this result is uh, retrieved from the database asynchronously, then it returns that result and it doesn't block any thread and it, because it remains responsive. So that is what it is doing. And to list async, asynchronously creates a list of T. T means a list of movie here, I mean generic call. T is generic class from an I queryable out T by enumerating it asynchronously. All right. And then let's go to this one. Get movie, get a single movie by ID by passing the ID of that movie. So here it is return and await. It's it will be the next step. Basically, it starts with creating a variable movie and assigning it. And before we assign, we'll await on this task await then again use the context object dot movies and then make use of this find async method so finds an entity with the given primary key values okay so that's what it does it asynchronously fetches with the id if any result with that ID returns is returned, then it gets and assigns it to the variable movie and then return this movie object. Okay. So that's all. So in this lecture, we have learned, we have created the movie DB service class, which derives from the, which implements the iMovie DB service. We have uh, injected the dependency with an application DB context and we have created, we have um, completed two methods get movies and get movies by ID using the context in the dependency injected object.